Hi everyone. Today I have a clothing haul. Can you believe it? After all of those hard goods, I finally put some clothes in my cart. My name is Lavender Clothesline on eBay and I figured it was time I should just show a clothing haul. Just get on with it. Just show some clothes. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a clothing haul, which I can't remember the last time I did a clothing haul. Why did I pick Lavender Clothesline? I don't know. I really have to rethink that. So out of the 3,300 items I have in my store, the majority of it is clothing, but I've been picking up so many hard goods lately that I forget I'm Lavender Clothesline. It's like, oh yeah, I sell clothes. So today I'm going to share this haul with you. I have not processed this. I haven't cleaned it. I haven't detagged it, nothing. I brought it in, I hung it up, done. I had no comps, no nothing, craziness. It's just been all craziness around here. I've been filming YouTube videos and then running to the thrift, running to the yard sales, coming home, eating quick. It's craziness. All good though. For those of you who don't know me, yes, I'm crazy and I sell on eBay full-time for a living. I am turning 59 this year, so it can be done. And yeah, I'm really excited to see what I bought, <laughs> show you what I bought and see what I bought. Um, it'll be a surprise for both of us. So let's get started and I will show the first item. The first item I found were these mucklocks. These are made by the company Oscar from Italy and uh, they are a genuine fur boot. The tag does not say what the fur is, but I'm going to guess it's like goat hair or llama because it's a coarse hair. So I'll have to do research on that, unfortunately, but I'll learn something new. It's not mink, mink or, or fox. You know how those have that soft, silky feel to it? This is more like coarse. How many times can we say coarse hair? But um, I will show you the label. This is Oscar, if you can see that. And these are in great condition and they fit. So there's always that, just saying. So I paid $7.97 for these and I have no idea what I'll get. So if you have ever sold or used or seen Oscar boots, uh, would you leave a comment down below to tell me how they sold for you? Thank you. The next item I'm going to talk about that I feel like talking about are these women's hiking shoes, sneaker things. I'm not sure. These are very unique. They have like a rocker pad on the bottom. So your foot is not flat on the ground. I'm guessing that's for building your calf muscles, thigh muscles, glutes, something like that. They have a Vibram sole and the brand name is Chung Shi. C-H-U-N-G-S-H-I. Very unique shoes. So I strictly went on that they had a Vibram sole. I've never heard of this brand, never picked up this brand. I haven't run comps. I paid $7.97 for these and they're really nice. So again, we shall see what they bring. And as usual, um, if you follow me on Instagram, Lavender Clothesline, I always post uh, a lot of my sold so you can see what my items are bringing. I like to just share that information so we all know what, what things really sell for. The next item uh, that I found was a men's button down. This is by the brand Blue Marlin. And uh, the reason I picked this up is that it has a cigar print. I thought this was very cool. I'm wondering this might be a vintage piece. I'll have to check on that. I'm not sure. I'm not familiar with Blue Marlin, but I felt the print was good enough to go in my cart. I paid $4.95 for this and I'm hoping for about $25 to $30. The next item is a brand Affliction. This is a men's shirt. Um, I don't know where this was sold. Definitely in the mall. I'm going to guess Affliction was sold at like Express or something like that. That's just a guess. Usually the Affliction shirts I pick up will have a large graphic applique on the back, usually like Tribal or something like that. This one was kind of plain, but because it had the brand name on the back, I figured uh, for the price that I paid, it you know it was worth picking up. Um, I actually found this in the bins, and my bins are $1.59 a pound. I had gone in just to say hi to a friend recently and found this and, uh, and just said, yeah, okay, I'll take that. The next item is a brand that I love to find. This is, let's see if I can show this, Eileen Fisher. Eileen Fisher makes such beautiful clothing. This is a gray, let me stand back and see if you can see this, a gray linen skirt. It has almost like a bubble hem to it. This is just stunning. 
So keywords, I will use lag and look, L-A-G-E-N-L-O-O-K. Lag and look is a very loose, um, flowy, bohemian style clothing. And it, lag and look has been a term around, that's been used for a while, a couple of years at least, if not more. And, um, but it still brings attention. So whenever I can use lag and look, I do. And Eileen Fisher, always yes. Like I said, I haven't really checked it over, but I think this is in great shape. So um, absolutely, I paid $4.95, I think, for this. Either $4.95 or $5.25, somewhere right around there. And this will bring over $60. The next item is a brand that I don't find a lot, but because of you guys, I knew to pick this up. This is Lafayette 148. So I've seen this talked about in people's hauls, and it's just a black career skirt. It has a box pleat. Let's see if I can show this. Black is hard to show, but in great condition. It doesn't even look like it's ever been worn, but I will call it pre-owned. It's got stretch to it, and I'm not sure what Lafayette 148 brings, but I think it's a, it's a nicer brand. So I'm gonna guess over $30, and uh, did I say I paid $4.95? The next item is White House Black Market, which we're all familiar with. And this is a woman's size 12 regular. And I held this up and said, oh, that'll fit me. Do you guys do that? Like, you know your size. And I always think I will fit into these usually big sizes. I'm like, oh, that'll fit. And uh, I think I just want to wear loose clothing at this point in life. But this is like a harem pant. It has an extra flap of material. Hope you guys can see this. Palazzo, we use all those keywords, and really nice quality. So I'm hoping for 40 for these. The next item is a shift dress, Vince Komodo, which I love this graphic. I think this is great. Again, this is something I pulled off and said, oh, that'll fit me. And it's a 2X, so <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't have body issues. I guess that's what that's saying. Like, oh, I'll just wear anything. It's so I just love the print. So yeah, really, really sweet, love it. Good find, I paid $5.25 for that. The next item is a blouse, this is Cabbie. We all know Cabbie, it's the newer label. And I thought the print was super cute, floral print. It's an MD, which with Cabbie, I'm not sure what the D stands for. I imagine medium, it's an abbreviation for medium, I'm hoping, let me see, let me put this. Mm, this is a little bit big, so I'm not sure if that's a medium. If you guys know what MD is, I mean, I'll do research, but would you let me know? Leave a comment down below. Next up is a tank. It's a striped tank, and this is Puella, which is an anthro brand, I believe. Just a little stretch knit. Uh, it's trapeze, which means the sides are wider. It's like, a, like an uppercase A. And yeah, super cute. Again, I wanna keep that size small. I might keep that one. So you might be seeing that in a future video. Okay, this is, this caught my attention right away. Can you guys see this? This is a cover up for the beach, I'm gonna call it. This is Stella and Dot. I'm pretty sure Stella and Dot makes handbags and um, wallets and stuff I've sold. Again, super cute. I'll call this an iCat print. ICAT to me is anything that has blurred edges, like it's, it'll be a geometric print, but it has blurring on the edges. Um, it has like a little bit of an ethnic look to it. Super cute, pom-poms on the bottom. This is new without tags. You, you can see that this has never been worn. So, and a drawstring waist, I thought that was super cute. So how many times can we say super cute? The next items, two items are nightgowns, vintage nightgowns. I think this is the 70s, don't quote me on that. These are adorable. This has the little turquoise bra shape to it and then flowy chiffon. It's maxi. So I bought this one and I think this is 70s, right? Is this 70s, guys? Chiffon. Look at this. At first, <laughs> I thought this was a shower cap. I'm like, oh, it comes with the shower cap. No, silly. This is bloomers. So um, little panty bloomers. How fun. And I don't believe this has ever been worn either. I don't know that this is all that romantic. It looks kind of like, uh, what do we call this? Color block? Color block. But uh, very pretty. And I paid $4.50 for each of these nightgowns. The 
This next item is Omni Shade, and it is a skirt. I'm sure all of you know what a skirt is. Shorts under a skirt. Uh, great for golf, tennis. I always put golf in my title. Anything that can be worn realistically for golf, golf is definitely going in the title. I sell a lot of items that golf gets put into the title. So to me, it doesn't have to be a brand that made the item for golf. It just has to be appropriate for golf. So what I mean by that is there is stretch to this fabric. So it's comfortable for athletic activities. Um, and a lot of women on the course do wear skorts. So um, good enough for me. So Omni Shade. Is that the name of the brand? It's Columbia, Columbia Omni Shade. The next item I picked up does have a flaw. I knew it had a flaw. This has some color run. The purple squares ran a little bit of color and it also has a few spots which I'm gonna work on, but this is Tibby. I like Tibby, Tibby sells very well for me. So for me, this is worth um, putting the time in to um, see if I can get this clean. Even if I can't get all the spots out, this will still sell. Love this graphic pattern. It almost reminds me of like paint swatches. When you go to Benjamin Moore and you pick out paint colors. So I really liked this. I will call this color block. This next item is a children's a girls shift dress, garden shift dress. This is Land's End, size 10, girls dress, country dress. Again, I noticed this has a few spots, but um, this is great. I'll do well with this. I'll, I'll work on those spots and get those out. The last dress I want to talk about is this floral spaghetti strap fit and flare. And this is Old Navy. Old Navy size extra large. This fit me. <laughs> I love this dress. So uh, it needs a good steaming, it needs cleaned. Where did I get this from? I don't even remember. Was this a yard sale? It all becomes a blur after a while, guys. The next item I'm gonna show is a men's shirt. This is Cotton Trader Sport. Again, this is vintage. This has the textured stripe like a Kuji sweater, only it's a polo shirt. And this graphic always does well. And again, I'm gonna put golf in the title for this. Even though this is not made specifically for golf, it doesn't say golf on the tag. Yep, I'm calling this a golf polo rugby shirt. This is just another men's Hawaiian shirt. I pick up a lot of these. And this is put out by Thumbs Up Sportswear. You can see that label. Parrots, palm trees, it's a good size. It is, I believe this is a 4X. I don't see the size now, I'll look on the side. Nice big shirt, breezy, cool, fun. This next item is, this is anthropology. I don't know how to say that, I wanna say ARC. Arg, like it's a pirate. It's A-R-Y-E-H, so why am I saying arg? Arye, arya, I don't know, not a clue. But, um, but look at that print. This reminds me of a 1960s couch. I like when clothing looks like upholstery material. I'm not saying I wear that, but as you can tell, I love bold prints. And it's funny because my whole house is neutral. I'm very neutral in the house, a lot of like beige and cream. And then my closet, I'll show it to you one day. It's just this explosion of color. I don't know what that's about. It's like color is okay on the body. Like, I don't know, like I'm attracted to, it, but I don't have to look at it because it's on my body. But in the house, I want everything burlap and linen and like restoration hardware when you see their catalog and it's all one color. That's my taste at home, but my closet is like a clown was in there or something, I don't know. Crazy, crazy. Anyway, um, yeah, so I don't know how to say this word. I know this is anthro, and I paid $5.25 for this. This next dress is Lauren Ralph Lauren. It is a brown maxi dress. Go all the way back. Silk, 100% silk, button down, gorgeous, just gorgeous. And this is a size two petite. This definitely will not fit me. So there's that. This next item is Lane Bryant. Uh, it's new with tags. It's a 1416. And the reason I picked this up is because it was new with tags, but it has a peplum bottom. I love a peplum bottom. I think it just looks so pretty when you wear it with like a, like a slim pants, like a cigarette leg, and then you wear a peplum and cute little pair of sandals. And yeah, so uh, navy blue, that's why I picked this up because of the peplum. 
This item, to tell you the truth, I don't know if I've shown this before or not. These are Palazzo pants. I love the print on these. Um, again, I think this is Lane Bryan. Yes, it is. And this is called The Alley. Super, super cute. How pretty are these? Love these. So uh, I paid four, four twenty-five for these. And that's my haul for today. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe and hit the bell notification so that when I post a new video, uh, you get to see what craziness I'm up to. And as always, go out and get what's yours. So this morning we have a good mix of hard goods, clothing, a men's hat, and a framed print or a framed photo. So I'm hoping to film some of this to show you how I ship uh, breakables again. I know there's been so much interest in that and hopefully I'll get a good camera angle and give you guys a basic ship tutorial. I pack most breakables the same way. Tissue paper, bubble wrap, and then into a box that's plenty big and filled with void. There's no real secret to it other than making sure your item is very well wrapped and that uh, it doesn't touch the sides of the box and that it's not movable in the box. So there's a rule of thumb that your package should be able to be dropped from a height of five feet. Sometimes I hear seven feet. I don't know that any breakable would survive that. We hope that it would, but we're gonna get started and I'm gonna go ahead and do the clothing first to get that out of the way and the men's hat because I've already shown that and then we'll do breakables together. So thanks for joining in. Hope you guys like this video and let me know down in the comments below what items you would like to see me ship or have questions about. Let's get started. One of the first things that I wanted to share with you guys is what I use in my office uh, to ship on or ship out of. This is an antique dresser that I found. I picked this up years ago and I now use it for shipping. I've used it in different rooms of my house and I find this invaluable for shipping. So it has a nice flat large surface of course on top and three deep drawers. The reason I really like this dresser is the drawers are very well built because it's a quality, you know, it's an older piece. I didn't pay a lot for it. I think I picked it up for maybe $100, which maybe that is a lot, but for the amount of service I get for this piece, well worth the money. I see some resellers using tables and I'm sure that works great too, but I have a little shelving unit by it for my boxes. And then within this, I'll actually show you inside the drawer. This is the top drawer of this. I keep supplies of everything that I need to ship. So when I get ready to pull my items, I just place them on top, open the top drawer, and, um, and have everything ease of use. That's the secret for me to be able to ship uh, with the least amount of stress because sh shipping breakables and all of these crazy items every day could be a real drag if I had to look for everything and you know take a lot of steps to go get the stuff. This is one holding place for everything and then like I've shown you above it I have all the wraps that I need. So when I go to ship, I don't have to move. I just stay right here. I do have a scale in the second drawer that I'll bring out. And I also um, have large amounts of backup in the bottom drawers for anything that I run out of right here. So everything in great supply, ready to go. Um, I'll show you what the drawer looks like so you can see extra plugs, fragile stickers, tape, business cards, stickers. Um, I actually have one of these foam sponges. These are great. This is actually foam that's used um, for cushions, to make cushions, and I find this is invaluable. I use this piece of foam to clean off any hats if they have a little bit of dust, suede shoes, anything like that. And once these get dirty, I just throw them away. So uh, you can wash them, but I pick this up very inexpensively. Um, and they are biodegradable, so that's a great thing for the environment. Um, so yeah, so so knives, stickies, everything, everything I could use. I figured I'd just mention that, and now let's get on with packing and shipping. 
All of my clothing is stored in large totes downstairs in my basement. And within those totes, I have the clothing folded with tissue paper in a clear Ziploc bag so no air can get in it. I try to press as much air out of these packages as I can so I can fit the greatest amount in these tubs and the item is labeled. Um, so that way when this gap jacket sells, I just go ahead and pull um, one of these mailers and slip it in and ship it out. Very easy, takes all of 10 seconds. So here's the Gap jacket, all ready to go in a priority padded mailer. I have this information pre-filled out in the listing. So when I see this jacket has sold, I pull the jacket, slip it right into this envelope and print a label. And the first package is done. This item is a coat, which I keep my coats hanging rather than packed down because I've found they take up too much room in, uh, in the bins. So I just hang them and keep them covered. This is a woman's diamond quilted uh, I'm going to call it a car coat or a car jacket. So let's go ahead and show you how I pack this. This is a piece of tissue paper on it and this is laying face down. So I put a piece of tissue paper and then I fold it, fold in the arms, this side goes in. And it just gets folded like that. I will then slip this into uh, some sort of clear bag. If I don't have a Ziploc bag that fits this, I will go ahead and use a recycle bag. These are clean bags that I buy and I will show you those. So this is the finished product of the Via Spiga quilted women's jacket. I did not have a clear Ziploc bag to put this into, so what I use are these great value, that's Walmart, recycling bags. These bags are um, great for packaging larger items that you want a clear inner bag. I use these for gowns, for big coats, before I slip them into a box or a poly mailer. These bags are on a roll and have this silver, pulled tie closure. I do go ahead and cut that tie off so that the item doesn't look so much like a garbage bag. Um, so this top part is cut off and the finished product is just taped and I press the air out of it. So this will now slip inside a poly mailer or a regional A box depending on where this is going. So the jacket weighed uh, 1.7 ounces, which rounds up to two pounds. I slipped it into this poly mailer. I did compare the cost to a regional A uh, box, but it wound up being $7.62 for the regional A, $7.39 for just the regular priority in a poly mailer. So I go ahead and slip it into the poly mailer and this item is all done and on its way. The next item that I'm gonna show you how I pack and ship is this ornate painted box. It is a long, narrow box with a handle and it has little ball feet on the bottom. So those feet I want to protect and I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. I start out by flipping the box over and I always save inner tubes from wrapping paper or any kind of paper products I purchase. This tube is the more stiff type. It's, it's more rigid than like a paper towel tube, so it's fairly sturdy. I go ahead and cut little pieces of this tubing that I save so that when I have an item like this that might have a breakable piece, something that if it gets hit, it'll, it'll get damaged, I go ahead and cut little pieces of the tubing and place them right over the feet of the box. These will be secured on with a couple of layers of tissue paper and that way it not only shows the buyer that I took extra care, but it kind of ensures that those little ball feet will be okay in shipping. So each of the ball feet, like I mentioned, have a little piece of this cardboard tubing and I've wrapped the handle with a little piece of tissue paper. Now I go ahead and wrap the box with several pieces of tissue paper. Like I've mentioned in prior videos, the tissue paper does not protect the box from damage, but rather from scratches. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera off so you don't have to listen to tape being pulled and I will come back when this is wrapped. So here's the box with the tissue paper. Like I said, the tissue paper also serves to hold those little cardboard feet on. Next, I will wrap the box in a layer of bubble wrap. As you guys know, I prefer the smaller bubble wrap, but that might change at any moment. And I go ahead and tape the bubble wrap on. Let's see if I can do this quiet. Still kind of loud. Okay, so I will come back when the bubble wrap is taped on. So this is the box that I selected when I first listed this ornate box. I make sure I have the proper size box and the dimensions are filled out in my listing. With dimensional weight, which is very much a part of USPS shipping now, be sure to have the box that you're going to ship in. So it's not a surprise if your box is much bigger than what the cubic foot standard is for um, throwing things into the next shipping cost, if that makes sense. So in the box, I put two pieces of paper from my roll of paper above. This will not really only cushion the ornate box, but will also help keep the ornate box from the wall of this box. We go ahead and slip this in, and that's a perfect fit. And we're gonna go ahead and cushion the sides and put cushioning on top. So craft paper is then packed. It's like a white craft paper or newspaper print. I think this might be a little thicker than newspaper print, but I get this on the roll. I pick it up in thrift stores or wherever I find this paper. And this paper gets put in around the perimeter of the box, again, to keep this product floating, to keep the item that you've sold floating. You don't want the item that you've sold to touch the box. You always want that room. So now I'm gonna go ahead and fill this in with packing peanuts to fill in any void space. Top with a piece of tissue paper, and I will show you what that looks like before I close the box. Here is the next step with packing peanuts. Uh, these are, I believe, the biodegradable ones. Filling any of the small voids of the box. And then next we put in a business card. So last goes a piece of folded tissue paper on top of the packing peanuts. This just provides a, a nice visual presentation for when the buyer receives their item and they get to unwrap what they've purchased. All of the boxes that I use for my shipping, I collect from stores that I go to. Uh, my postman actually saves me his boxes. Thanks so much, Bob. And yeah, I, I don't think in my six years of uh, full-time selling on eBay, I've ever purchased a box, not that I can remember. What I do want to mention is anytime you reuse boxes, whether you get them from Amazon or wherever, you want to be sure to remove any UPC um, labels. If the boxes have printed on UPC, I think that's what these are called, I go ahead and either cross that out or use a fragile sticker over it. That way, it's a courtesy to the post office that things don't get scanned incorrectly and go missing, and it also helps me have confidence that this item is gonna to get to its buyer. So here is the finished wrapped package, all ready to go with its fragile stickers on and securely taped. Shipping hard goods is something that does take more time and more work, so you wanna to build to the cost of doing this into your product. If you're only gonna make a few dollars with hard goods, in my opinion, it's not worth it because you do have to give um, finding a box consideration, you know, having all of these packing materials on hand. For me, the profit has been phenomenal. This has really rounded out my store. As you know, I'm Lavender Clothesline and I sell a very good amount of hard goods. I'm gonna say I probably have upped my profit I'm gonna guess off the top of my head by 40% by selling hard goods, maybe even higher. So for me, it's worth it. Again, I build all of the cost of doing this, my time, my labor, my packing materials into selling these items. There is no way that I would spend this kind of time if I didn't make very good profit. So off this goes to its buyer and let's ship the next item. The next item we're going to ship is a highly breakable, fragile item. It's this garden gnome. Some of you might have watched my previous video. It was a haul video, and I talked about finding this guy. I listed him for $70 and ran a sale in my store. He sold for just under $52. 
really thrilled that he's going to a good home. So let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you how I wrap and ship this guy. So the first thing I'm going to do is, as you know, you always know I wrap everything in tissue paper. Tissue paper is going to protect the finish, the paint, so he doesn't get scratched in any way. And I think tissue paper is just a very inexpensive way of having a nice presentation. When a buyer receives an item, if the item is just thrown into a bag or thrown into a box with not any kind of wrapping, it's my personal opinion that it doesn't show that you took time and care with the item. So that way, if there are any issues, if you've taken a lot of time to prepare your package, I feel the customer will most likely message you and let you know that something has gone wrong. And that's always what I want. There's going to be problems in business. There's going to be problems with shipping. To kind of run ahead of the game and prepare the way to have a good relationship with your buyer, I'm going to do everything I can to make that relationship and make that transaction the most pleasant and the best for everybody. So that's why I wrap almost everything I sell in tissue paper first. And tissue paper, you can get 400 sheets in, I believe I picked mine up in Costco, uh, especially after Christmas, and I think I paid $5.47 for 400 sheets. So I do pick up massive quantities. You know, I, I get a roll off of them so um, because I use so much of them but for me to build in those pennies is great and like I said I think the buyer really appreciates it so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this guy in a couple layers of tissue paper look how cute he is and I will be back so the garden gnome has been wrapped in the tissue paper and it's been taped next I put him in bubble wrap which I usually cuff the ends to create a little bit of thickness there and then fold this over and secure it just like that. We'll see if we can let this tape not make much noise. It's going to be loud. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish wrapping this with bubble wrap because it has a lot of taping and I will be back. So we are done with the bubble wrap layer. It is all secure in tissue paper and bubble wrap. The next thing I'm going to show you is this, I'm gonna call it a styrofoam cooler. This styrofoam cooler was given to me by my postal carrier, Bob. He works for USPS. And this employee is phenomenal. He actually saves me a lot of his packing materials that he gets at his house from his personal use. So he receives these styrofoam coolers from items that he receives that are um, refrigerated items, and he saves these for me. So Bob, thank you so much again. I love receiving these. So the first thing we're gonna do with this is, we're going to put some packing connects in the bottom of this. Even though this, even though this cooler is very cushioning in itself, I'm still going to go ahead and put some packing peanuts in the bottom of it. Next, our garden gnome will be placed inside. So some of the void is filled with packing paper and peanuts gets put on top. So here is the garden gnome packaged completely in the styrofoam cooler, which is the box. Normally I would put this type of box in a poly mailer. I buy these poly mailers, the large size. This is 19 by 24 for my larger items, but this is so large that I'm going to need a, a bigger bag to wrap in. So what I do is I purchase the hefty strong uh, trash can liners. These are 33 gallon and even if this item doesn't slip into the opening I can go ahead and cut the bags open and create wrap for this. One thing I always do is for some reason I cut off the top banding so that it just looks like you know poly wrap. Most people would realize that this is a trash can liner but I feel that this is I don't know, I, that's just me. I just cut this part off to make it look nicer. So I will go ahead and wrap and come back and show you when that's done. So here is the finished package. It's all wrapped and taped and ready to go. The styrofoam cooler box is very lightweight. Sometimes at the end of the summer season, if I see styrofoam coolers on sale very inexpensively, like a store like Walmart is clearing them out for like 99 cents, I will go ahead and pick up a few of those to be able to use those for shipping. I'm not a big fan of styrofoam. I think that the product is not an environmentally friendly product. 
But having said that, with so many of these things produced, my feeling is while they're being produced, I think we should use the item as many times as possible to save it from the environment. That's just my personal feeling. So hopefully when this buyer gets the styrofoam um, cooler, they'll reuse it again. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and stay tuned for part three of Crazy High Profit Thrift Finds. This first item is a vintage silver plated ice bucket. It had lion's head uh, rings on the side. I priced this at $72.50 and used farmhouse chic as one of the keyword terms. This next item was a Sanyo men's trench coat. I never heard of Sanyo before. I thought the quality was really nice, so I strictly was going on quality. I placed it in my cart. Uh, Sanyo is a good name. I don't know that this name brings this kind of money. I got $176.33 for it, and I paid $7.97. Third item is a men's belt. You know I love selling men's belts, especially ones with really high quality. This is an Australian saltwater crocodile belt. I got $90 for it, and I paid $2.97. The next item was a really cool find. I found these Bender magnetic uh, posable figures in their tins. I'd never heard of this. These are little wire figures that are very highly collectible. I found 17 in one bag. They looked brand new and I got $82.75. I paid $2.97. This next item is just an H&M sweatshirt. Uh, Katy Perry actually modeled it for H&M, so I was allowed to use the Katy Perry name. It's an Elfie Selfie. That was the name of this sweatshirt. I got $51.40, which was higher than the original price in H&M, and it sold fairly quickly. So really happy with this. I paid $4.97. This next item are handmade Atlantic Mold Christmas Carolers. I had this set of three. Whoever made these did an excellent job of painting them. These were adorable. I believe I paid, I'm trying to remember, either $6.97 or $8.97. I think it was $6.97 and I got $68.99 for them. This next silk scarf was a scarf that I found at a yard sale along with other scarves in the lot. I paid 25 cents a scarf and this one brought $146.30. Um, I did have to wait a couple of months for this sale, but definitely worth waiting for that kind of profit. Uh, like I said, I paid a quarter and I believe all of the scarves from that lot have sold. They didn't all bring this kind of price, but they all sold for over $30 and like I said, I paid a quarter. This next item I was thrilled not only to find but to learn about and then I visited the retail store in King of Prussia Mall. This is Laura Piana. It's baby cashmere sweater. Laura Piano puts out gorgeous uh, quality merchandise. If you get a chance to go to their retail store, definitely worth a trip. Um, I got $423.30 for this sweater and I paid $4.95. This next item is a Boris O'Klein, which I never heard of. It's an etching or an art print, and it's called Dirty Dogs, which I thought was hysterical. These are a cartoon drawing of dogs peeing against a wall, and I was actually with a friend in the thrift store and saw this and put it in the cart, and he was just laughing and saying, why in the world would you pick something up like that? And I said, I have a good feeling about this, and the feeling was right, $192.70 and I paid, I have to look this up, I think I paid $2.97 or $4.97. I'm gonna say $4.97. This is another hand-knitted sweater. Again, gorgeous workmanship. It was vintage, $148.02. And like I said, when I find vintage sweaters that are handmade with this type of skill level, this is like artesian skill level, just gorgeous. So really happy with this profit and I paid $4.97. This next skirt is MSK, which if you comp that, if you look up comps on that brand, that brand does not normally bring this type of money. But when I saw this skirt, I thought it had a lot going for it. It was patchwork, uh, mixed media, it had velvets and silks, just gorgeous. Uh, $55.84 and I paid $4.95. This next item again is Guess. 
This was a sequin top, a little sequin top, a cami top. I paid $4.97 for, and I got $48.92 because that's what I wanted for it, and that's what it sold for. The next item is a picture frame in a lot of picture frames I picked up. I found these nine of them and I took all nine very quickly. I could tell just from the workmanship and the silver, I'm going to call them grommets or brackets, I'm not quite sure what would we call that, detailing, uh, was marked sterling silver. So uh, nine picture frames, I paid, I believe it was $6.97 for all nine, they were grouped together and this brought $117.25. All nine of these picture frames sold. All of them brought a crazy high profit. This is an unbranded genuine leather backpack. I go by the quality of the leather and the quality of the workmanship. I look at the stitching to make sure it's all even. I look at the hardware. The hardware here is brass and $68.50 is what I got. I paid $6.97 for this. This next two-piece set is a vintage Carlisle. It's a silk women's blouse and jacket. This is called Baroque or um, a jewel pattern. $122.22 and I paid $4.97 for the set. The next item, we would expect it to bring this kind of money. This is Ferragamo. These were men's driving loafers, just beautiful. If I was a man, if I was a boy, this is what I would wear. Um, I paid I believe $9.97 for these or $12.97. So I did pay up a little bit. I'd have to go back into my records to see what I paid, but either way, I got $211.25. These took a lot longer to sell than I thought. I thought this would be very quick. I got a lot of low offers. I think because there were a men's nine, it did really close the market window of who you know would be able to wear these. The next is salt and pepper shaker. This is teak wood again. You guys know I love picking up teak wood. Definitely mid-century modern. They were just beautiful. $43.05 and I paid $4.97 for these. This swan is one of my favorite finds again. I picked this up solely on the way it looked. There's no marking on this. There was no signature and I just thought this was beautiful. It's just a carved black swan. I didn't even know if it was a duck or a swan, but I put it in my cart very quickly. So I set the price and $395 and I paid $497 for this. This is one of the picture frames, Maitland and Smith. It was one of the group of nine that I just spoke about, $108.75. This is a lot that um, you guys have heard of. I made a video um, portion about this. This is that military gear I picked up. These four receivers or transceivers brought $200. And I bought this in a lot where the whole lot cost me $5. This is a woman's gown that I picked up last year, I believe it was. It was one of 11 gowns. I paid an average of $20 a gown. These were all new, donated by a bridal shop. This one brought $151.30. I think I've sold the majority of those gowns. I'd have to check my inventory. I think I have three left or two left. Um, and they've all brought between $150 and $200. This belt, you guys, again, knew about. This is the Tony Lama belt. $77.50 is what I got for this belt. This is a wooden bucket. I had this bucket, again, for quite a while. This was very heavy and uh, brought $122.07. I paid $6.97. And this last item is old soap. Yep, <laughs> vintage soap. So you can even see discoloration a little bit in the wrapper of the soap. This is Yves Saint Laurent. This was three bars of soap. There's a bar in that middle case. And I paid $2.97 for this and it brought $97.50. So there's another installment of crazy high profit finds. I was really thrilled with all of this. I love not only being able to sell these things, but to learn about these things, which most times I know nothing about. So I put them in my cart and for the small investment, always worth it. So thanks for watching and go out and get what's yours. Mm -hmm.